Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis. Welcome to our boardroom today. Praise the Lord. We love to do a social media thing in this boardroom because this is where all the decisions are made for Jesse Duplantis Ministry globally as well as locally, a Covenant Church and all the different things that are going on here locally in the New Orleans area and then, of course, abroad in the world. I want to talk today about something I felt the Lord put on my heart entitled Doing Your Best. Ooh. I mean, not just some of it, but all the time, not just once in a great while, but doing your best. And Paul, Paul is writing to his protege, Timothy, okay. which I really like. You can hear uh, the, his, 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 I don't know, his voice when you read the, the epistles because Paul was such a phenomenal man. And I want to go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want to start reading with verse 1, and I want you to listen to this for a minute because I believe the Lord gave this not only for me and Kathy, but gave this for you. And everything you do, spiritually, physically, financially, you must do your best. Mm-hmm. All the time, no matter what. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and verses 2, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a pretty good charge, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, mm-hmm. be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I want to deal with be instant in season and out of season. So I tell that to Kathy all the time. If she goes to get up, I say, go get me some water. She says, is your legs broke? I said, no, yeah, but I'm instant in season. <laughs> Since you're walking toward the refrigerator, I thought, you know, you might bring back some water. Yeah, so, well, it what do you think? It what you usually think? works. <laughs> well, sometimes it works. <laughs> you know, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. What does that mean? Preach the word, not preach your opinion. Mm-hmm. Not preach your homiletical or your hermeneutical, philosophical, theological point of view, which is good, but preach the word of God and ex- say it at, I mean, at face value. Yeah. Why he said to be instant and in season and out of season? Because you always have an opportunity. Yeah. That's See, true. no matter that's whether it's spiritual, physical, or fine, you have an opportunity. So if you're taking a note, I want you to write this down. To be instant in season means there's an opportunity for service. Mm-hmm. An opportunity. So I stay, uh, I, I load it up with the Word of God in every, in every part of my life because, you see, I might have to reprove. Yeah. I might have to rebuke. Nah, I don't like that. I don't like, I mean, your business is your business, you see. But when God speaks something to me to tell someone, most of the time or nine times out of ten, it's, it's very uh, good, you know. But then there's sometimes it's straight to the point right. because love in its purest form is discipline. That's right. See, there's an opportunity. Now, I prefer not to say that. But my preference is not part of this. God says, I tell you to do your best and be instant in season, out of season. How many times uh, you've told me, you know, I believe the Lord's telling you to preach today. Yeah. And, and I thought, my God, I ain't even had studied. Yeah, during I this had a chance. whole season, which some people <laughs> call the COVID season or right. the virus season, we've had a season of the feast of the Word of God. Amen. And it's been strong. It's been good. We've been getting great testimonies and, for people. And I have never done this since the beginning of when we built Covenant Church. I think we started it in 2000. 19, or 90, no, 1997. We 97. launched the church. In September. And I'm telling you, I, this is going to be my 16th straight week. Yeah. Well, God, we got to get rid of this virus so, so I can take a preach, break. You're preaching again this Sunday? <laughs> Do you want me to? Why, yes. Do you want to preach? No, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Yo, are we instant in season? <laughs> I am. I, I like sitting on the front row saying amen. Oh, I like sitting no, on the I front row. I love preaching too, but Did I Did you see how she spent that? She just kind of sw- sw- twisted that <laughs> I think good. just in this season, it's so wonderful that we have you in the house. Usually you're traveling all over the globe, all Why over the place. Why don't you say that when we're at home? I do. <laughs> I he just never gets... He wants me to say it again and Yes, again I love again. hearing can't... compliments. It's a blessing. <laughs> hey, can I read that, yes, that you passage certainly can. of Scripture that you read in the Amplified? In the Amplified. Know, we're studying our Bible again together see, with all these people that are watching. They're all part of this study together. <laughs> yeah, see, Kathy likes the Amplified. I like the old King James. Amplified means, you know, is that means you need to hear it a little stronger. Is that, that correct? That you want to hear more. Oh, I understand. Yeah, okay, and listen. Go ahead. Can, and you can listen more. <laughs> okay, I will okay, listen it more. It says in the verse 2 of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 again, okay. Amplified. Classic Bible says, Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by, be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether Mm. it is welcome or Mm. unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong and convince them. Uh, uh, Say that again. Would you say that again? I want y'all listening. Are you gonna put that towards me? <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I just saw a little, uh, a little crack in the window right there. Oh, go ahead. Let's, don't say it, say it okay, again. I don't mind. <laughs> okay. Where the part says, uh, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher 
of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. Amen. And convince them, rebuking and correcting and warning and urging and co- encouraging them, being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. That really covers that, it all. That covers it all. It's See, wonderful. Now, that, that's not fun to do that. Mm-hmm. But if you do that according to the Word of God, you're doing your best. That's right. It would be very wrong that if someone is going astray for you not to be, especially as a minister of the gospel, you, that you shouldn't tell them the truth. Now, they may not like it. It has nothing to do with like. It has to do with putting people on the right path That's so true. at the right time at the right place, which gives, gives me an idea. You, you, have to, you have to choose the right time for action. Right. That's you see what good. I'm saying? You have to choose the right time for action. In other words, you may not have to say it right then and there, but there's coming a time when it's the right time to say that. See, a lot of times, if I want Kathy to do something for me, which is all the time, and you know, I have to choose the right time <laughs> at the right he's place. High, he's high maintenance. I'm not high maintenance. I'm very low maintenance. Oh, I've no. always thought that. I really he always have. says he's low maintenance because he says w- he'll Would eat. you make the sign of the cross on your head? I don't want you to lie in front of all these people. Say, <laughs> he will say that he will eat anything, so that's supposed to qualify that he's low maintenance, but the, I tell him, well, you are high maintenance because I have to get it to your mouth. Well, that's true. That's true. I got, I got, I got to agree with that. <laughs> so bring it to you. <laughs> bring it to the instant in season and out of season. See, a lot of times we're out of season. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. But God said, you have to be instant. There's sometimes I don't want to preach. Now, I'm going to shock you when I say that. Sometimes, well, let me just say it like my good friend, sometime, Lord, sometimes I don't feel saved. Mm -hmm. Is that shocking you? Sometimes, and sometimes I'm so mad at somebody, I don't want to be saved (laughs) just for a few minutes, and then I'll jump back in. You know what I'm saying? Just let me do something God I want to do. You can't do that. So you have to be instant in season, honestly, which means you have to do your best even when you don't feel like you're doing your best. In other words, you believe in God for healing, okay? You said, but the word said, by Jesus stripes you were healed. Now, buddy, you are having pain. That ain't fun. But you see, you, have the, you, you need to choose that time right there to constantly say, by his stripes, I am. Right. I were, I is, whatever how you want to say it, right. healed. Right. You see what I'm saying? Do you agree with that? I agree. And, you know, no matter what difficult situation you're going through, this scripture can really help you. Because Paul was writing to Timothy here, 2 Timothy, and Timothy was the pastor of the church at Ephesus. So he had two Timothys? No, well... <laughs> I thought I'd throw it in that. No, I know. It's There's a, one Timothy, the second epistle. But the first time he wrote to Timothy, he was the pastor of the church at Ephesus, which was the largest church in all of Asia, and it was thriving and flourishing. But later on, things went wrong. Oh, things yeah. started to go south, basically. And that's when he wrote Second Timothy, he told him to stir up the gift of God. Yes. Remember this. And also he says, always be prepared to preach, no matter what it looks like. Right. Never give up. With your calling. Right, right. Amen. And that, that's, that's, that's the truth. See, you never give up. There was a, one of the greatest, probably the greatest um, opera tenor in the world was Enrico Caruso. I mean, I mean, now I believe he was born in the 1800s and he sang like in the 1900s, 1902, 3, 4, 5, 6, mm-hmm. or what, yeah, way back really, when. You're not really an opera fan. No, I'm not an you opera rep, fan. You, you appreciate the quality oh, the, the, and the, the gift. The, the, the know, gift was amazing. Everyone does. So I said he was very wealthy because he had a phenomenal voice. Okay, I mean, they say he is the, I mean, that's what you design yourself around if you're a man and you're a tenor. If you can get to Enrico Caruso think, singing like he, you've done something. And Pavarotti, I, I personally believe Pavarotti got there. But I mean, mm-hmm. anyway, to make a long story short, Mr. Caruso was invited to do a charitable event. Mm-hmm. This is a true story. And I love this. And I'm going to show you the kind of man he was with the gift that he had. And so his manager... And A just said, uh, Enrico, there's not going to be a lot of people there. So you don't, you know, you don't, you, you're not required to do much. You know, you can just go come in because you're going to pull a crowd just because you, you're there and because your name is there. You can sing one song if you want, to, one song at the most too, but don't do that. You know, he said, just, you know, just give him a little and go. And Enrico looked at his manager and his agent. He said, Caruso always does his best. Hmm. And I, I never forgot that when I read that in that book. Caruso always does his best. It makes no difference how many people are in them pews. It doesn't make how many difference if you're preaching to, I mean, a stadium or you're preaching to one. You must do your best. That's what it means to be instant, in season, out of season, because the gift requires that. That's good. See, the gift requires that you do your best. Let me ask you a question today. Are you doing your best for your church? 
Uh oh, now we're getting a little reproving here, I say. Are you doing the best you can when it comes to giving? In fact, I, I, let, let me deal with that for a minute. People really struggle with tithing. I've never been able to figure out why. Well, I want to show you something. Okay, we got some people behind the camera and different things. Anybody got a, a dollar bill? Hand me, a, anybody got any money on you? I know Todd's all got a little money. He hides it from his wife. So it's, <laughs> just, just, give me a, just give me a dollar. And, oh, oh he's, he's, big one. bring it over here. You don't matter what denomination it is, does, Kathy. Now watch this. Okay. Now, Todd, I want you to come in. Come here. I want you to get into the shot. <laughs> come on. I want you to come see it. Now, I, now listen, this is a very simple illustration, but I'm telling you, it will speak about it. This is Todd. He's the head of our uh, supervisor of our television ministry. Now, this is Todd's money. Mm -hmm. That's a $20 bill. Is that correct, Todd? Andrew Jackson on that. That's your money. Now, you have put it in my hand. I'm holding your money. I should not have any problem giving you your money. So, in other words, this is your 20. Is that correct, Todd? Yes, sir. I give you your 20, right? Yes. Now, go ahead. You go ahead and sit back. Notice I didn't have any problem giving Todd his money. Why do you have a problem giving God his money? Hmm. It's just 10%. He's never changed it, the rate. It all, actually all belongs to him. Well, yes. He gives it all to him. He gave you the help to make it. comes from him. And, he, and the reason he wants us to give the 10%, it's not that he actually so needs, it. needs it. He wants us to put him first. And when we put him first, his Amen. blessing comes on our 90 There's enough, not there enough room to receive yeah, it. Yeah, he's going to open that. up the windows of heaven, Malachi. We comes. have never That's struggled with that. Like, I mean, a lot of times I'll have some money that uh, belongs to Kathy. I'll say, hey, Kathy, this is your money, you know, or whatever. I don't have a problem giving her money. I don't have a problem giving God his money. And I love the 10% rate because he hadn't changed it in thousands of years. MasterCard has changed all the time. <laughs> and Visa and the banks and the mortgage people and all and this kind government. of stuff. And the CDs <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But he never changes the rate. See, when you, when you look at it like that, that that's his money. Just like Todd's money, was, that was his 20. That was his. I had no problem giving it. Why? Because it's his. Mm -hmm. You see, that's being instant in season, out of season. So when God blesses me with money that I've earned, I, I, I immediately take his 10%. Then I do more than that. It says I give over and above, and I believe that kind of stuff. That's what he's talking about, being instant in season and out of season. In other words, you say, but I need that money. Oh, you want to borrow money from God. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. Well, well, wait a minute, wait. See, you're touching something that doesn't belong to you. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that. So don't complicate this. This is so easy that you need a good theologian to help you misunderstand it. Mm -hmm. It's just simply giving someone something that they already own, that's already theirs. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And God said, if you do this, in Malachi 3.10, I will open up the windows of heaven. That's pretty big. Mm -hmm. Pull you out of blessing. Watch that. That's, there shall not be room enough to receive it. But I like the next verse better. Yes. And I will I rebuke it. the devourer for your sake. That's right. You know, I mean, spiritually, physically, and financially, the anointing of increase is on me. Don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. He gave it to me. It's on me personally, and it's on my ministry. It's amazing how long equipment lasts in my ministry. How long air conditioning. We just changed an air condition here at the executive offices that's uh, 25 years old. Never did nothing to it and ran it. Every day for 25 years. In the South. In the <laughs> South, buddy. With 95, 98 degrees, 100% humidity. In fact, uh -huh. the, uh, what they call the air condition, I call them the air conditioned people. They say, we go broke waiting on you to fix up. Well, you see, what happens is we bless the ministry and the ministry blesses us. That's, that's increased right there. Mm -hmm. See, that's increased. And when you understand that, God's word is so true. So he said, be instant in season, out of season. So some of you may need to be reproved. Don't get mad about that. Your pastor might have to tell you something you don't like. But all they're trying to do, if he's a good pastor or she's a good either one, is trying to get you on the right path to keep you there. Because let's face it, when you're having trouble, you want them, you want that pastor to be there. When you're having trouble, you want that doctor to be there, right? Don't you? Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes the pastor's going through some things. I felt let the Lord say that. Mm -hmm. How come you're not there? Man, he might be studying Saturday night, my God, to, to get a, what I call a spiritual meal, and you don't even show up because you didn't feel like it. You could have at least called. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen to me. See, that's what it means to be instant in season. Honestly, me and Kathy, even when we go somewhere where we're not preaching, we don't cut God out of our lives. We don't mm -hmm. cut God. If we're on vacation, we don't cut God out. No, no. I'll tell all my partners right now, and we have a lot of partners. There never goes a day. Well, that we don't pray for you every day. 
I get up in the morning. It's my daily devotion. I pray for you <clears throat> every day. Why? I think you deserve to be prayed for, and I think you want me to pray for you. Just that simple. Not because you're a financial partner, even though you are, and I thank you for that. It's because you have decided to believe in me. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Jesus. He never told people to believe his words. He said, believe in me. Mm -hmm. He got personal with that. I, I preached that, I believe it was last Sunday. Believe in me. In other words, when you see me, you see the Father. That's why Jesus always had the right answer at the right time, at the right place, because everything he saw was an opportunity. Yes. Now, what is your, what's going to happen today? There's an opportunity that's going to come before you today. And if you're instant in season, out of season, you're going to receive it. Which brings me to this next point. I want you to understand this. You must adapt your conduct to circumstances. You're going to have to adapt your, con your, your conduct to cir circumstance. Let me give you a prime example. Me and Kathy have been married 50 years, and most of the time, I'm going to say 99, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, in front of everybody. I, I will. Would say, I, I will. knew you would. <laughs> About 99.99999% of the time that me and this woman have had an argument, it's been about ministry. It's been about this. Usually we don't have that much between us. But, we, okay, we get a day off, which is kind of hard to get sometimes. To make a long story short, so, so we, we like a, a, a beautiful restaurant here in New Orleans called Mr. B's. So th this, this is an example. We, it, this happened. So we get in the car, and we, we have something going on in the ministry. Now, this is sad that we all, we're going down there to get some lunch. All of a sudden, man, you can t the devil got in the car with us. You understand what I'm saying? You ever been there? I mean, you can roll the windows up, but he gets in the crack. I don't know how he gets through <laughs> that, but he just does, you know. To make a long story short, we started talking, and naturally, I mean, it was about something in the ministry and stuff like that. And I said, Kathy, stop. And she's done this to me, too. I Jesse, it, I stop. I think I did it first. You probably no. did it first. Okay, let me say, Jesse, stop. <laughs> Jesse, stop. I'm kidding. Oh, no, I really should say it first. I said, Kathy, stop. Mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you something. That problem is not going away. We're going to have to confront that thing come Monday. But this is our day off. So we're going to deal with that Monday. So... <clears throat> uh, what are you going to order when you get to Mr. V's? Oh, after we finish eating lunch, you want to go shopping somewhere? You want to go do something? And you could just feel the, it just all just lifted. went away. Yeah, it just lifted, see? And I could have just argued about something, but I was instant in season, or she's done it to me. She was instant in season and out of season. Sometimes I, I wanted to still talk about it. Hmm. But you know what? The problem ain't going away. It's going to stay here until we fix it come Monday. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I adapted my conduct to the circumstances. That's good. Do you That's see what good. I'm saying? That's what you need to do in every area of your life. Be instant in season. I say, but just say, I can't pay my bills. You're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. What? Uh-oh. That shocked you, huh? But I can't pay my bills. You're not supposed to. That's not your job. That's God's job. See, the reason why you're struggling paying your bills is you trying to do God's job. He said, he, he didn't ask you to pay for it. He asked you to believe for it. He said he would supply all your need, mm -hmm. yours. Yeah, he said he would rebuke the devourer for that's, your sake. That's sin. another thing. But you see, if what people tither. do, they get into this. Well, bless God, I just got, I got, well, you know, I mean, I can't see God. You ain't supposed to see him. It has nothing to do with seeing him. It has nothing to do with it. You see what I'm trying to say? See, you're automatically assuming but what you don't have that you can't do what you're supposed to do. Well, the reason why you can't do that, that's not your job. Let me stay on that for a minute. Mm -hmm. That's God's job. Uh, it takes millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to run this ministry. This thing is cooking. This is a machine. This don't eat a slice of pizza. This eats a truck pizza, a whole truckload of pizza. Boom. One time. Boom. One time. I mean, especially in television. I didn't want a camera. How much between the lens, the camera, the, uh, the stand that it's on, you're talking big money. Boom. But, you know, that's not my job to pay that. It's my job to believe for believe it. it. Yeah, but. Now, you see, that's the problem. You need to get your butt out the way. See, the butt's too big right there. You understand what I'm saying? That's a conjunction you need to get rid of. God says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that goes out of my lips. What came out of his lips was, I will supply all your need, mm -hmm. your need, stick your finger at yourself, my need, according to his riches and glory. I know what you're thinking. Well, the COVID, uh, the, they got to shut down. That ain't got anything to do with paying your bills. Because it's according to his riches in glory, and it's higher than the virus. Mm. It's higher than the losing of a job. You see what I'm saying? And know something about God. He's always instant in season and out of season. Mm -hmm. You know, he is never late. That's right. But I sure wish he was early sometimes. <laughs> I like I God to be a little early, you know what I'm saying? We all do. But he's on time. On time. So when you understand, you have to, let me say it again, you have to adapt your conduct to circumstances. See, so there are a lot of circumstances that will arise. Sometimes I'm walking down the 
the whole night. I don't have a worry in the world. Nothing. I'm not supposed to worry, but I mean, you know, everything's going as good. All of a sudden, someone comes flying out the office and say, boss, we need this. Okay, yesterday, <laughs> I didn't know we didn't have a lock that wasn't working on the door. I mean, you know, that's below my pay grade. I have people that handle like us. We, we had lunch, huh? No, we had, yeah, we had lunch. And Kathy goes, uh, Ricky, he's the, he's the head of the, he's a director of a, uh, engineering, engineering over and buildings all, over and building. He like says, that. Jesse, we got to change the lock on the door. And I'm thinking, why is he calling me to change a lock on a door? Because it's almost $6,000. <laughs> I went, well, it's six thousand dollars for a lock. It's connected to the electronic keypads. That's and all those correct. Kinds of it, 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 all this stuff, stuff is computerized. See, and he said we uh, we had to put a two by four. I think what he said. So because the door won't lock, so someone couldn't open up the door. Now I got the, almost six grand. I thought Jesus, but the day before. See, this was so wonderful about being the head of the ministry. They think, ooh, that's something. Let me help you. The day before, we need a new genie. I said, a genie? We have a genie? Where's the bottle? <laughs> I go, I rub the bottle. The genie. No, no, a genie is a lift that'll take you up to about 95 feet. We got tall buildings, steeples, and stuff like that. I said, he said, also, we need a scissor lift. Brand new one. Boom. I said, well, how much is that? He said, about $70,000. Now, you got to understand I proved that two days ago. Then I got hit for six thousand dollars more yesterday. I ain't going outside today. <laughs> but you know what? That's not my job to pay for that. Mm -hmm. It's God's job, and I don't hear God saying, "I'll tell you one thing, Jesse. We just can't afford that." Gabriel broke his wing last night, and we got to fix that. And we, no, he didn't say any of that. Why? Because he's instant. In season mm -hmm. and out of season all the time. You see, so you must change. And let me say it again. You must adopt your, uh, adapt your conduct to the circumstances that you're having in life. That's what Paul uh, was saying to here to Timothy. Preach the word. Yeah. Be instant in season and out of season. Now, wait, this is a young preacher. Reprove. He's a young man. A young, an old man don't like a young man telling him what to do. An older brother don't like a younger brother telling him what to do. An older sister don't like a young sister, a younger sister telling them what to do. It's just something about that age difference, you know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I remember this reminded me of something. <laughs> Even the little bitty kids understand authority and recognize oh, yeah. who's in charge. I think it's my sister. Uh, her, Myra, huh? Myra's grandchildren were, mm -hmm. telling, were playing together. It was like three of them were born almost at the same time for her, from her children. You know, She right. hadn't had children, grandchildren for a long time, and then all of a sudden, here they are, yeah, all the at whole once. Crop. And they're like two or three or four years old, something like that, and they're playing. And one of them was really bossy, and she didn't like it, you know, the other kids didn't like it, so the little one of them looked at her and said, you're not the fusser, she's the fuss, and pointed at Grandma. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> not the They knew who was supposed to be the fusser. That's a Cajun, a fusser. <laughs> you're not the fusser, she's the fusser. In other yeah. words, she didn't like it yeah. at that Grandma young age. can do it, but you can't yeah, do it yo, to me. Nobody right. likes to be told. <laughs> And it, that's amazing, see? So, but, but the child was instant, instant, not instant. That was a reproof right there to the one that was bossy. Yeah, sometimes you need to speak up for yourself. That's Don't right. let the, the devil rebuke, you know. That's why I'm not getting a telephone. So I have to speak <laughs> up for myself. Kathy been screaming at me for years that I don't carry a phone. Isn't it wonderful? That's why I'm happy. I got some peace in my life. But she carries her phone, and she gets so mad. She said, I am not your secretary. That's right. That's you, my wife, which is a much higher level. Glory <laughs> to God. And you all also, uh, with COO, Chief Operating Officer, so you need a phone. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. And I just like to use her phone. And I have to just choose my battles. That's right. Praise <laughs> the Lord. She has I'll to come adapt. At it another, that means that I'm going to come at it another way another time. She has to adapt her conduct <laughs> to the circumstances that are going on. I want to give you another point. Never do less than your best. I just told you about Caruso. Yeah. When I go to preach the gospel, and I preach all over the world, and I've preached in some of the biggest churches in the world. I've <laughs> preached to thousands by television, actually billions by television, millions. But you know, if I go to a small, sometimes I, I, I go to small churches. Mm -hmm. I'll go to one, I, and I'm not bragging on it, I give them my best. It's true. I'm not going in and say, uh, let me bless you with my presence. That's ignorance going to see. Yeah. Someone, you, somebody says that, mm -hmm. tell them stay home. Well, I've seen you do that in small groups. Yes. And maybe just that, but I've, I know you even do it with, with one. Oh, yeah. And I'm just thinking about one story. You know, we were at a believers convention. You were preparing to go and preach, I think, with 10,000 people were in the auditorium uh -huh. that were expected. And you were, got dressed a little earlier and went down to the lobby. And there was this young teenage looking guy. I don't know. You were 
this was probably 20 years ago or something like that. Oh, yeah, I know and, you're talking about, yes. Yeah, and so he, you saw this little guy, and you started chatting with him back and forth about music, just talking. And Waiting visiting. for my driver to come and pick yeah, us up. Yeah, can you tell us that story? Well, That's one of my favorite testimonies. Well, I was just in, in, there at the Hilton Hotel in Anaheim, California. So I just went, I, the Lord said, go downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, if I go downstairs, I'm going to be, the people going to, not, not that I'm something, but when you're a guest speaker at a major convention, people know who you are. Yeah, and you wanted, to be, grab you wanted to be refreshed because you were about to go I wanted to be refreshed because, I mean, right. I got to go in there. Now, it wasn't 10,000. There was 15,000 people in that auditorium. So I said, I go down, and I see this young man, and he just looks at me like this. And I and it had kind of, not, I wouldn't say a, I don't know, just a, a funny look, not a bad look. I said, how you doing? I began to talk to him and stuff like that. And he says, uh. You know, and uh, I said, what do you do? You know, he said, well, you know, I play a little music. I said, oh, you play music? I said, I used to be a musician. I began to talk to him. Mm -hmm. he, 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 I said, I'm one of the guest speakers here at the Kenneth Copeland West Coast Believers Convention. This is probably 20 years ago, mm -hmm. a little over 20 maybe. maybe. To make a long story short, we had a communication there. I ministered to him. I just prayed with him for a little bit. And I said, man, I, I said, you know, I said, listen, if, if you come tonight, I'll play a song for you. Because, you know, sometimes I play the piano, I'll sing something like that. Not yeah. very often, but I did. Well, that night I got up there and I did a old, old Negro spiritual is what they called it. Mm -hmm. And I love Brother Blake and he's in heaven today. But he taught me this when I was about 10 years old. Me and the devil, we had a tussle, but I won. He go, me and the devil, Lord, we did agree. <laughs> I hate the devil, Lord, the devil hates me. Oh, it. me it's and great. the devil, boy. And I mean, and I played it. The place went nuts and I did a little piano it uh, stuff. Great. It was kicking the place. I think the, the way you said it, you started it off with. I talked to a young man yes. today. I don't know if you're here today in the audience or in the congregation, yes. but this is for you. I didn't know if he had come. How do yeah. I know? You know what I'm saying? And so you did that, and then nothing, we didn't know anything else about that then. No. Years later, maybe 10 years later or something oh, like that. Oh, at least 10 we years. We heard about a young man that went on TBN and gave his testimony. I think he was being interviewed by Dwight Thompson. Dwight Thompson, great preacher And Dwight preacher Thompson of the said, well, tell me about, and this was uh, actually Robert Schuller's grandson. grandson. Bobby. I did not know that. Bobby so Shula, Bobby who's on television all over the world right so now. So someone said, hey, sent us the link, said you have to watch this. We didn't know. So here he is. He's telling his testimony. He says, and, and uh, uh, Dwight asked him, well, how, tell us your testimony. You grew up in a pastor's home, you know, all this. How yes. did you really come to know Jesus? And he starts giving his testimony about that encounter. A guy that named, he, Jesse a to, named Jesse Duplant. He says, I was away from God, and I just he, we started talking. And he says, and that when I went to the meeting, he says, I don't remember what was preached, but he said, I saw something in his eyes, the light Amen. of Jesus in his eyes. I think yeah. is the way he said it. And it totally turned him around. Now he's pastor today again. Oh, so. is he pastor? <laughs> Plus he's all over television. But wasn't that powerful? So, Bob, if you're seeing this, oh, my man, how you doing? And this was a Robert Shuler's grandson. Now, think about this. Um, it was an opportunity. I didn't know it was an opportunity. You, yeah, per se. you didn't know who he I was, was just going downstairs. And you know, that driver is never late. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one thing about Brother Copeland. When, they, when, they, when Brother Copeland stabbed, when they tell you they're going to pick it, they're going to pick it. He was late. I believe that was done on purpose by the Lord mm -hmm. so I could put some things. All I was doing was just being nice to the guy, you know, and just pray with him. And uh, then I had something. So, he was a, a, a host at TBN in California. Mm -hmm. This is probably, I don't know, seven years ago, six, seven years ago, whatever it was. And he was hosting, and he invited me to be one of his guests. Oh, Do you yeah, remember that? I forgot about that. It was such a blessing. See, see, that's you what I'm telling you. I had to adapt myself to that circumstance. And then I had to do my best. Now, that man is reaching millions of people for the Lord Jesus Christ. How many are you going to reach today? Mm -hmm. See, but you got to be instant in season, out of season. I didn't know what I was going to say. I had no idea. I didn't know he had backed away from the Lord. Well, no. I never asked anybody. You didn't even know who he was. I didn't, didn't even know who he was. That's mm -hmm. true. And, uh, and, uh, but At it's amazing. Time. You see, you got to understand something. What, you might have a very famous grandfather, Robert Shuler, a very famous man. Now, he's in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, uh, is, I think Robert Shuler Jr. was his, is this young man's father, I think. Right. And uh, I mean... It, it don't make no difference if you are a, a child of a very famous preacher. Well, I'm thinking about Franklin Graham. He wrote, he wrote a book. Now, this is Billy Graham's son. He said, rebel with a cause. Mm 
Really? Yeah, I read the book, frankly, and, and, and I guess I guess he he anchored Billy Graham's soul. He was a rebel, but look what he's doing today. The head of Samaritan Purse, the head of Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. You see, a lot of people think if you're a minister of the gospel, you know, oh y'all just don't ever have any trouble. Oh, we have more than most people because we have an anointing that Satan sees. Mm -hmm. See, and what's he does? What he does is tries to shut it down. I, I want to deal with another point here. Never regulate your enthusiasm by your surroundings. Mm. I never regulate my enthusiasm. I stay happy. I have many yeah. opportunities to be sad, sick, disgusted, broke, busted. I don't do that. I said, no, since I have a choice, mm -hmm. I'm going to be happy. Yep. And th there are a lot of things around me that tries to change that to being angry. I said, no, that's not going to happen like what we did in the car. Yeah. So we could have a nice day. Yeah. Just, 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 just a nice day. What's wrong with having a nice day? You know, uh, I, I, I still do a lot of exercise. I shouldn't be the skinniest man in the world. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? I am disciplined. I have been running and jogging since I'm 28 years old. I'm 70 years old. I'll be 71 in about two weeks. I mean, look at the fat on them cheeks. I tell you, it just drives me nuts. It's the popcorn, Jesse. Is it the popcorn? It's that devilish and the popcorn. Chips. Guess what? I got a gift. I got a gift. For a year's supply of popcorn. A new I'm trying to go, oh. every month is going to come to the house. And you know, you could eat what, it if you just don't what, eat the whole bucket. That's what our daughter Jody gave you. Yes, it for, was such a blessing. Father's Day. It was fine. See, so what I have to do <laughs> is uh, regulate. See, I, I got excited about it. My, I, I never regulate my enthusiasm. I said, I'm no. going to stay happy. Even when everything's going it's wrong. A choice. You know, sometimes I get some bad thoughts like everybody else. I immediately, because I'm instant in season, out of season, I rebuke the thought, and I rebuke the devil. I say it out loud sometimes. That's not my thoughts. <clears throat> People turn around and look at me. What? I say, that's not my thoughts. My thoughts are lovely, just, good report, pure, and virtue. See, I'm talking to myself. You need to do that, yeah. Uh, that's, you need, and buddy, I'm going to say, the devil runs and the thought runs. Mm -hmm. Casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I had to captivate that thought by throwing it out. Yeah. And I don't care if I'm in front of somebody. You, Kathy, you know, I am a stickler for praying over my food. Sure. I pray over my food. I mean, I, I, I just do. I don't care if people are sitting real close to me uh, in another table, you know, sometime before all the social distancing and stuff, and they'll hear me pray. That doesn't make any difference to me. I've had some people go like this. They be like, they go, and then they put it in because I guess they forgot to pray over their food. The other day we were with Keith Moore and Phyllis Moore. And I love the way they pray over their food. Mm -hmm. Tell them how he prayed about the people well, in the kitchen. Well, he starts praying for what's in the back, in the yeah. kitchen. Lord, prepare. Have them choose the best cut of meat. You know, all these kinds of things yes. like that, praying about the pre preparation of the yes. food. Yes. And I never thought, you I just say, Lord, bless this food to my body. <laughs> and, you know, because not what you eat is what you digest. Yeah. You know, that's what brings you all the strength and you write the digestive part. But he prays for the preparers. And that's so. important because it's that's about very, you're about to eat it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no idea. They may have dropped it on and the floor. You don't even know it. When it comes to the table, if we've ordered the same thing, maybe a steak, and someone at the table has a big old steak and yours is little and you ordered the same thing, you know, everybody kind of looks at each other. <laughs> what happened? I want preferential I guess they don't like treatment. You. <laughs> yeah. But when so you I understand. Y'all think I'm on a diet? What's and going Kathy, on? And you know, Kathy calls, calls me a seagull. Oh, she, yeah. It's always a seagull. Yeah. There ain't no seagull. Tell him why you call I him call a seagull. I call him a seagull because whenever we're eating, I never know when he's going to swoop in. Yeah, and, I just and take my take fork. take a bite go, of my food. Mm, take a <laughs> bite know, of that. And he says, you didn't want that last shrimp, did you? <laughs> <laughs> now, watch this. See, she gets so angry at me sometimes. Let me tell you just a personal thing. Because if I go to a restaurant, I order the same thing. And she says, why are you ordering? Every that? time. Every time. I'm <laughs> saying, every time. She said, why are you ordering the same thing? Uh, I like it. I, for some reason, that does not compute in her head. Why don't you get something different? I don't want something different. Yeah. I want this. Now, I like it. This has happened so many times. She likes to try. You know, she variety. So she'll order something really good. Now, watch this. It sounds I ordered, good. I ordered, yeah, I ordered on my, the menu, it looks real good. Let me finish this, baby. I ordered my staple. I got it. You know, George, I got it. You understand? So I'm about ready to eat this. I don't like this. Like that. And Kathy takes a bite of her food. She goes, oh, I don't like this. What's that got to do with me? She says, can I have yours? No, you can't have mine. See, she's already tasted mine. She knows what mine tastes like. But then I said, well, then order something else. 
Well, yeah, but we already paid for it. I said, we ain't broke. You want something else? I want and something else. sometimes I've ordered something that you, now becomes your favorite. You know? Like what? I, oh, many times. <laughs> I don't have time right Mention now. Mention one thing that I, you In my wanted. mind, it's happened many times. <laughs> you have to pray for Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make this sign true. of the cross for you. It's a new thing. I like, hey, I got a scripture about new things. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Isaiah 43. Oh, you were instant this season or not, huh, baby? Come in on. The boy, in the voice Bible. Can you do it without this? No, I can't. <laughs> okay, go ahead. That's why I wrote it down. I understand. I wanted to read this today. I got it. Because, you know, God gave me a message of, oh, a few years back called A New Season. You want to preach it Sunday? No, 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 I'm just I've already joking. preached it, but I just want to touch on it just a bit. Cause okay. It was like he gave me like one word things about it, prepare, plant, and produce. It was so powerful because he's calling us to prepare the way for others to know Jesus, and he's calling us to plant seeds that will lead others Amen. to Jesus. And he also wants us to produce fruit. That Amen. glorifies him. But I love this verse in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 19. It's in the voice Bible. It says, don't revel only in the past or spend all your time recounting the victories of days gone by. Watch closely. I am preparing something new. It's happening now. Hallelujah. Even as I speak, and you're about to see it, I'm preparing a way through the desert. Waters will flow where there had been none. Praise the Lord. I believe God is leading us all to a new season, a new plan, of, a Amen. time of receiving. He's preparing us. But we have to be, like you said, instant in season and out of season and, and recognize there are going to be opportunities ahead of us. I like what you said about that uh, preparing waters. You see, everybody goes through dry places. I've had people say, you know, I never saw you sad, sick, disgusted. You know, I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. The reason why I didn't get disturbed by it, I kept walking. Mm -hmm. I didn't build a house in the valley of the shadow of death and canonize the place. Or if I meant, quote, a dry place, because of the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus, I'm giving you a revelation right now. I call upon the water to come up out of the ground. Mm. It doesn't mean, I don't care if it's a desert place. I don't care if it's an a, a oasis, whatever. You see, no, if I'm going through it, if it's a dry place, people say, now, brother Jesse, you better watch it because that's not going to be easy. This is going to be tough. I've had that with churches. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you, that church will hurt you. They'll steal your offering. They'll do different things. Like that. So that's walking through the dry place. But when I get there, I rebuke that mm -hmm. before I get there. And when I'm walking on that dry sand, because there's always water under the ground. Somewhere. Right. See what I'm saying? And I call up on that water. You come up, you bubble up, and you refresh me. Mm -hmm. Ooh, am I preaching good today, that's Lord? You see, and that's what keeps this face, or this, not my face, but my, my smile on my face, you see? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I mean, there's always somebody attacking you, especially if you're a preacher. Watch this. And you got some money. I am a wealthy man. I'm not going to lie about it. And it's not my fault. It's Jesus' fault. <laughs> I'm going to have to blame him. And it's a good blame. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. How many times I've taken something that everybody said it's not worth anything, turn it around, and it produced something wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, I made some pretty good business deals in my life. Or you don't do this. And I missed some good business deals, too, mm -hmm. by not listening to God, you know. Yeah. Listen more to my eyes instead of and, and, and what I thought instead of what he thought. And when you understand that, see, people get so mad about that. Well, my God, I don't think you ought to have that. And I don't get mad when I, when I say this. I don't think I asked you. And I don't mean that to be rude. But excuse me. I don't, I don't say nothing about how you live. <laughs> Well, why do people want to attack me? Well, I don't, I don't think he ought to have a plane. If you had my schedule, let me just say this. Years ago when I flew Delta and American and Southwest, I knew so many pilots, flight attendants, because I was on them every day, you see, but it came to a point where no commercial airline could fly my schedule. I never thought that would happen. Never in my wildest dreams. I didn't mind going to the airport. You used to bring me all the time. Remember? Mm -hmm. Drop me off. And, but what happened was God got me so busy. I said, God, I can't do this. He said, you can do all things through me. You just need the tools. Yeah. Now, I still wasn't thinking of an airplane. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to fly. I don't want to learn how to fly. I mean, that's not my interest, you see. He said, I'll get you a plane. And brother, it wasn't. It happened. And all of a sudden, I, God sent me the people to fly it, mm -hmm. sent me the people to maintenance it. Mm -hmm. Th things of that nature. I mean, I never forget one time, I mean, this is kind of crazy. They let me sit in the right seat, even though I own the plane. I said, let me sit over there. And I was sitting there like, and I put on the headphone, and I heard this uh, uh, Atlanta Center uh, calling a Falcon, not, not Falcon, it, was, it would be Citation, uh, what was the name of that plane? It was my first Citation. 
Uh, they, they have the Juliet Delta. They have these kind of, and he said, turn 10 degrees. I wanted to say, is that left or is that right? You don't say that, because <laughs> they're going to pull you down. And, of course, the pilot knew what to do. See, the, see, the reason why I can't fly that plane is not because uh, I'm not smart enough. I can learn it. I don't understand the language. You see, so many people watching today, you don't understand the language of Christianity, of being blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. You have received the language of the world, poverty, sickness, and disease, and it will teach you something. What? What? What is cancer teaching you? Most people have had it or are in the grave today. But we got a guy at our church who's got a wonderful wife, and they diagnosed him with stage four cancer. I'm going I'm to just name, I'm going to give his letter Greg and his wife is Brenda. And Brenda, my God, and Greg stood on the word of God. She stage got, four is the worst you can get. She's got bulldog faith. Oh, she's she got bulldog faith. She, I remember she showed me her, her binder. Ooh, she had Lord. all the scriptures she's standing on, the prophecy. Amen. What the word said. She says, and I remember her showing it to me at intercessory prayer one night, not long after he had been diagnosed. She says, I want to show you what a good healthy blood cell looks like because they had said his cells right. were having had cancer. So she was not focusing on the problem. She was yeah. focusing on the answer. Ooh, I like and that. from the very beginning and she stood strong and, and it was it's such a blessing to see her rejoicing right. in church last well, Sunday because they have a great victory. You focus on your priority priority, you eliminate all your confusion. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. So he goes to MD Anderson, I believe it was mm -hmm. there in Houston. Stage four. That's the worst he can get. Stood on the word of God. Did he get some bad report? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stood on the word of God. And they were led by God about the treatment. Amen. They did have treatment. They followed through. Did they all did, the they things did what the, I believe in doing what doctors tell you to do. I got right. no problem with that. Stood on the word of God. Mm -hmm. Instant, in season, out of season. Put their faith. Every time they got a bad report, they rebuked it. Right. They put the faith. They didn't deny it. They rebuked right. it. Right. Today, he's cancer free. Yes. Hallelujah. Isn't that a blessing <laughs> of God? And Brenda was at church last Sunday, and she was just a shouting all. And I said, let her get as loud yeah. as she uh -huh. wants, because that's something and to shout about. And he was watching from home. Still, Amen. He's, he's fully recovered, but fully he's just recovered. Be, being wise to stay yes. at and, home and, during see, this getting season. More I mean, getting straight now, watch, the ones that said that you're not going to make it are saying, he done made it. <laughs> we had another person, Kathy's sister, said had the same thing, was attacked by cancer. And under the, uh, what they call it, anesthesia. The, uh, anesthesia, when they told her what it was, she said, we got this. Yeah. And came out of that totally cancer. Yeah, we just ran her testimony in our magazine, Amen. in the main what issue a of our God. ministry magazine. I'm saying all that to say this. Maybe you've got a bad report. Let me help you. Rebuke it. Mm -hmm. What? Rebuke it. Be instant in season. Don't accept it. Rebuke it. Right. Don't deny it. Whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. So let me, I want to read that scripture again. I'm going to start from 2 uh, Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee, this is Paul talking to Timothy. I charge thee there before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. I charge you right now before God. Look at me. Look at me. I'm giving you a charge. I charge you before God and Jesus Christ. That's the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. If Paul can do that, I can do that. That's right. You need that charge. Then I'm going to read the rest of it. Who shall judge the quick and the dead mm -hmm. at his appearing in his kingdom? Ladies and gentlemen, he is coming. Preach the word. I'm preaching the word to you right now. Be instant in season and out of season. Makes no difference by how I feel about it. I reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hmm. In other words, you can count on Jesse DePlanis and Kathy DePlanis. We got your back. Can I continue on? Yes, you can. Verse 3 goes I'm on to say, here. Praise God. and this is the reason he was supposed to continue to preach the word, stay instant in season, Amen. reprove, rebuke. He says, verse 3 says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, That's right. but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall mm -hmm. be turned into, unto fables. But watch thou in all things, Amen. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full doing. proof of thy ministry. So he had specific instructions for a purpose. Exactly. No matter how, what you see, how bad it is. I made a charge for you today. Mm -hmm. Your bills are going to be paid. Your body going to be healed. The word tells us that. Your children are going to be saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
The virus is going to die, and you're going to live and not die. That's right. That's for someone right now watching That's me. That's right. My, my God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not just saying that to make you feel good. Mm-hmm. Man, they can give you a drug to make you feel good, and you can still die. I'm talking about I put a charge. I felt led of the Lord to charge you with this gospel mm-hmm. and believe God with you spiritually, physically, financially. Every time you send comments, you know, on uh, Instagram or Facebook, uh, yeah, what's all got, the other ones? I have a, quite a few here if you, uh, a if bunch you of, want to read. I know we're, getting a little, we're going a little over time here. I hope that you don't mind. You know, people ask us to pray. I want to pray right now. Sure. For every comment. Yes. Uh, prayer request. Every suggestion, prayer request, whatever. Every testimony. Right. Too. Father, in Jesus' name. Jesus. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. That those people commented on those platforms, social platforms. Lord, touch them. They need someone to believe with them. Yes. Now, Lord, we do it anyway. We do it at home. We do it at the office. But I want to do it in front of them that are watching this. So they'll know, not just believe that we're thank doing you, it. Thank you, Lord. Father, minister and answer their prayers. Mm. All of them, not some of them, Father. Yes. Lord. I thank you for it. I believe you for it. I call it done right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, amen Lord. Amen and amen. Maybe amen. we have time for one or two of those. And then, because uh, uh, we've done 45 minutes, normally <laughs> we don't go this long. But these are so we, good. We're we instant in season, not a season. I think these came quickly. from our last boardroom chat, so yes. you, they may have been already there. I'd like to read it. Okay. But this one is from uh, Sarah. It says, thank you, Jesse and Kathy, for bringing in this message. I'm now learning to take a step of faith and trust amen. that God will show me a way to my destination. I will also pray that my faith will be illuminated, which will amen. tell me that I'm on the right track. Thanks me, you. Thank you both for sharing. Isn't that a blessing, God? I like this. This is this is from a, a, a girl named Doris. I need to laugh today. <laughs> thank you, Brother Jesse. You know I can make you smile. I, see, I, just by saying that, you started laughing. Uh-huh. Doris, you're gonna laugh the rest of your life. Yeah, Hallelujah. Donna, Donna says I truly enjoy these boardroom messages. They are helping me tremendously. Amen. Thank you, Jesse and Kathy. Donna, I hope you're watching again on this one. It's a blessing of the Lord. Well, we've done 46 minutes and 11 seconds. I guess we went a little longer than normal. It felt like this. Yeah, I so know, quick. just quick. Whatever you need, desire, want. You got a heavenly father. Yes. You got a, the son of God. Yes. You got the Holy Spirit. That's three. You only needed yes. two. Two of you agree. You got Kathy. That's four. You got Jesse. That's five. And a host of people here that work for me mm-hmm. believe in God for you. With you and partners all over the world that partners all over the world. I got to thank my partners. Yeah, (laughs) I just have to say it. I mean, you that support this ministry financially. Mm -hmm. My God, I wish I could just go to your house and say thank you. See, it's to me, it's financial. Yeah, it's money, but it's not about that. It's about the heart that you have to help us reach people, People. change lives, one soul at a time. Amen. Just that simple. And I've said it so many times. You've heard me say it on television. Whatever you send, 100% of it goes in the world evangelism. We've been debt-free so long, Mm -hmm. (laughs) since 1982. We have no concept of debt. We don't even think about that whatsoever at all. And God is so good and gracious, and that's going to happen to you also. Mm -hmm. So thank you for supporting partners. You know how to give to this. There's all kinds of ways to do it, PayPal or text to give, JDM, all that kind of stuff. You know all about that. I don't even have to mention it. What I'm saying is, and some people say, you well, you mention it. Well, I'm doing it for the people that don't know how. And, but don't feel obligated. Hey, no, no, no whatsoever at all. But you know, one day, one day I'm going to your house. And I hope it's on the planet Earth. I know it's going to be in the planet Heaven. I may not be able to do it. Look at that look on her face. I can say, how can you do that? You're gone all the time. Well, you just never know. I never thought I'd meet Bobby Shula. Mm-hmm. God makes, he makes these Smiling supernatural I had to give you an example right there. Glory to God. You just, sometime it happens, you know. But I'll tell you this much. All of you, when we all get to heaven, there ain't no daylight. I mean, there ain't no darkness. There's nothing but daylight. And we ain't got, I'm, Lots of I'm, time. I'm, I'm coming to your Eternity. House. <laughs> yes, sir. So this is Jesse and Kathy once again saying we love you. Mm-hmm. We pray for you daily. Until next time, God's word is true. And thank you for being a blessing. And pass this on. They call it sharing it. Is yeah. that right? Share it. Share it. Share it. Whatever that is. Is that a girl name? Share it? No. <laughs> share. Share S-H- it. Share it. S-H-A-R-E. Share this. Got it. Until next time, we'll see Spread you soon. Spread the word. Yes. Be instant in season and yes. out of season. See you later. Bye-bye. Put Bye-bye. your thumb up, Kathy. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>